What is going on YouTube? I'm Lamont at Large. Today we are in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm going to tell you a story about a man who was tried and convicted of a rape and murder and sentenced to die by lethal injection and who was later freed off of death row after the confession of a man who claims that he has had sex with over 100 corpses. Where do you go with a story like this? Where do you start? Well, like with most stories in the world, you simply start at the beginning. We're going to go back to August 19th, 1982. A suburb in Cincinnati, Ohio called Roselawn. One 19-year-old girl, Karen Sue Range, living with both of her parents. On that day, she was home by herself. Later on in the evening, her mother comes home, calls out her name, Karen. No answer. She goes upstairs. The bathroom door is open. She sees her daughter covered in blood on the floor, dead. Homicide detectives come. They're taking fingerprints, taking blood samples, all of that. Eventually, through their hard work and determination, one man is arrested for her murder. One 22-year-old, David Steffen. Steffen was in that neighborhood that day. He was a door-to-door -door salesman. He was selling cleaning products. According to his own confession, he had knocked on the door. Karen opened the door. They went upstairs to the bathroom He was demonstrating whatever cleaning product he was selling. Next thing you know, he's attacking her and very, very viciously so he did. He stomped on her chest. He took out a knife and slit her throat, almost decapitating her. And they asked him, well, what about the rape? And he said, I didn't rape her. The detective tells him in some uh, language that I can't say on this channel, we know you raped her. We found your semen in her vaginal area and on her underwear. He said, I don't know what you're talking about, but I didn't do that. I didn't rape her. I tried to, but I couldn't get an erection. So after I slit her throat, I left. Now, back in those days, we didn't have the DNA technology that we have now. So they're not able to match the semen directly to David Steffen. But the detectives and the prosecutor, they said the hell with that. He's a murdering scumbag. Let's go for the death penalty. Not necessarily just because of the murder, but because of the rape, which would be a special enhancement to the crime. It was eligible for the death penalty in Ohio back in those days had just reinstated the de death penalty in 1981. So he's the first batter up, so to speak. A 12 member jury found this scumbag ultimately guilty of the brutal rape and murder of Karen Sue Range. He's sentenced to die. The family has some kind of closure. Meanwhile, Stefan from death row being very adamant. I did not assault her. I swear I did not. I killed her. And because of the added enhancement of rape to that case, he is on death row. So for years and years and years, this guy is fighting, saying, I didn't do it. I killed her. And he knew the intimate details of the murder. He knew what the newspapers and the TV reporters 
weren't saying on the news. So they definitely know he killed her, so they just believe he's a lying sack of crap. So we're going to fast forward about uh, 25 years or so. so uh, year after year after year, this guy is denying the rape. Finally, in 2006, going from state to federal court, he gets approval of having the DNA sample from the Karen Sue range murder to compare it to his own and they compare the dna sample and to their shock it is not his dna they're looking around at each other this guy even though he's a murderer and that doesn't change anything he did not commit the sexual assault of Karen Sue Range. So now we're asking ourselves, what is going on here? Now, according to Karen's parents, you know, she was a virgin. Now I know we all like to think that our children are virgins and they're Boy Scouts and they hope they help old ladies cross the street we truly don't know what our children are doing when we're not around however in this case the parents were saying like look she did not have a boyfriend she was not like that they were very very adamant so they take the dna and they put it through the computer to see if they could find a match and lo and behold, they have a hit from a man named Kenneth Douglas. And they say, wait, wait a minute. So they're looking at this guy. The reason why they have his DNA is because he was sentenced to some time in Ohio for a drug conviction. I guess in Ohio, they have a law. If you go to prison, you have to submit your DNA to keep on file okay still doesn't make any sense how did this guy's DNA get anywhere near Karen Sue range well they did a very quick background check and Kenneth was a morgue attendant at the Hamilton County coroner's office here in Cincinnati Ohio for 16 years he worked there from 1976 to about 1992 so they get a hold of Kenneth Douglas and they say listen uh, they tell him why he's there they're telling him about a murder victim And they basically just ask him, like, look, we're trying to close this case up. How did your DNA get inside of her? And the next few hours um, actually blow the, the detectives' minds. This guy said, and he admitted it. He said, I had sex with her. And they said, how did you know her if you had sex with her? No, 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 no. When she was murdered, they brought her body into the coroner's facility where I worked and I was tasked with transporting the bodies once they would come in from the coroner's vans into the refrigerated areas. My job, other than to keep the place clean, was to transfer the bodies to the refrigerator 
before they were to be autopsied. This man had sex with this girl's body. He admitted to there being other victims, other female corpses that he would have sex with. He estimated over the length of time that he worked for the Hamilton County Coroner's Office that he had sex with a hundred corpses. And that is how his semen was found and that young murder victim. This case was very sensationalized just because of the actual fact of what he did. It basically sensationalized itself. It was all over the world's news at the time. And because of that, because of him saying what he did, technically, he won a new right, a right to a new trial. And I believe instead of the judicial system having to drag the parents into court again and they have to relive that horrible, horrible day, the judge just went ahead and resentenced David Steffen to life in prison without the chance of parole. And he agreed that he would not seek any kind of appeal or anything. Coincidentally enough, during the time that Kenneth Douglas worked here at this coroner's office, his wife would have to sometimes come pick him up from work because he was so drunk, he would come to work and basically drink and smoke crack. And a lot of times when he would jump in her car, she said, quote, he smelled like booze and sex and had even went so far as to contacting the director of the coroner's office and said, hey, this guy reeks of booze and sex. He's, he's obviously doing something that he shouldn't be doing at work. And she says that the director basically told her in so many words, whatever happens on county time on county property is county business. Amazing, absolutely amazing. The disgusting things that depraved lunatics like Kenneth Douglas do. He also admitted to having sex with one Charlene Appling who was six months pregnant at the time of her murder. In 2009, he was convicted of abuse of a corpse and sentenced. One article says three years, the other says six years. So it could have been three to six years, uh, followed by, uh, I believe, three years of supervised probation. He claimed in court that he had a drug and alcohol problem and that if he would have never drank or smoked crack while he was working, it would have never happened. And there was a lawsuit that was brought on by some of the family's victims, which they settled out of court. I don't know if each victim family members each got 900,000, but I believe the, the whole total was $900,000. So there's not gonna be very much of that left after you divvy that up between the family members and the, of course, the vultures, the attorneys, they get their cut. And this right here, this is the Hamilton County Coroner's Office. This is where all of those disgusting hap happenings happened so many years ago. All he got charged with was gross abuse of a corpse. You know, to be victimized and murdered in life and to be victimized again in death, I mean, oh my God. 
And you know what the 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 uh, disgusting thing, one of the many disgusting things of this story, is that they knew that Kenneth was here at night drinking and having sex. Supposedly there was a story that he had got caught with a prostitute in here, but they didn't fire him. They didn't do anything about it. Live but not live, but still alive by the grace of God. I'm Lamont at large. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you on the next vlog. Rest in peace to all the victims of this strange, sadistic, and cruel monster. Peace out.